Rise and shine, everybody. It's time to wake up with Susan. Spiritual awakening can be a beautiful, messy, and sometimes lonely journey. So let's do it together. I'm your host, Susan Sutherland. I'm an intuitive healer and spiritual mentor. We are all called to rise up above our conditioning and limiting beliefs and shine our light on ourselves and others. So let's get to it. Hi, family. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. I feel like it's been forever because the last two episodes were pre-recorded interviews because I knew I had my trip coming up to San Diego and then I had this facial that completely wrecked my face. And since I upload these episodes onto YouTube, I decided not to record last week for the three people that watched there, but you're welcome. Um, So it's really exciting to be back because since the last time I spoke with you, I've been to this conference, which was the Conference on Consciousness and Human Evolution. That's That's a mouthful. So from now on, I'll just be calling it the conference. And we have spent a month in the book club doing A Course in Miracles. And there have been some brilliant nuggets that have come through through that as well that I want to talk to you about. I want to share with you all of this information. However, when I'm sitting down to make notes, it was like, oh, and this, and this, and this. And so I'm really going to try to um, focus on one good nugget at a time and not um, do my ADHD, bing, 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 and this, and this, and this, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so um, when I was at this conference, The presenters there are wide range, um, but many of them are brilliant doctors and brilliant scientists, um, an earth scientist and a a people scientist. Bruce Lipton, I guess, is a people scientist, Um, but also stem cell researchers and doctors and surgeons. And um, if there is a way to feel even more limited by my dropping out of college than put me in the audience there. And fortunately, like I was, it was such a great um, energy to be in. And the messages were like just coming to me all day long, which is very swimmy and lovely. And I, I love that very much. Um, (laughs) But as I was sitting there, my thought to myself was, see, sister, you should have stayed in school. And Spirit's response was, that would be more that we're unteaching you now. Because basically what they're up there presenting is contradictions to a lot of what we have learned in school. And I mean, if we know how our school systems work, for them to overturn any information or add any information to it to contradict the current curriculum will take 500 years. And so um, probably best that I slept through some of my classes and then dropped out of school because I am not meant to be the stem cell researcher or the surgeon, I assure you. You do not want me to be your surgeon. Anyway, um, (laughs) it made me think of Edgar Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey was the sleeping psychic. He would go into a trance and essentially be in a sleeping mode while he gave readings. But how he originally came by his gifts, came by working with spirit in this way, was his dad was really hard and really critical of him. And he wasn't good in school. And after a particularly like hard session working with his dad and he couldn't spell any of the words he was supposed to be spelling, he is praying going, you know, you got to help me. You got to help me. And essentially he had this knowing that his prayers were answered. um, And all of a sudden he knew how to spell every single word in the book, could refer back to certain pages and the the information was just there. And so while I was sitting there looking at these slides of medical information and scientific information, I was just thinking that pay attention and when you need the understanding, it will just be there. And so let's hope that's true because, um, a lot of it was, it was real smart stuff, y'all. So, um, 
I shouldn't make it out like I'm an idiot. I'm really not an idiot, but I am also not a physicist. So we all have our strengths and um, that one's not mine. But they did present it in a way that was very, I got it enough. I got it enough and, and why I knew I was there in addition to connections that I made when I was there because I do feel like I was divinely placed in the orbit of certain people. But I, I think what a lot of them presented was the scientific reasoning why I can read the field while I can pull in information that is helpful for other people. Like why I do have access to information that is not in, you know, about me specifically and how healing works. And so it gave me a scientific understanding of what I already know to be true. I just I don't know how it works. I just know that it does. And so I, my understanding is always like, I am just a channel for divine information and divine energy. And that is how I heal, which I still believe is true. They were just showing some of the science behind how that could possibly be. So anyway, all right. So today's nugget is about chaos and coherence. Chaos can also be discoherence. Um, and those are, those are our two choices in everything, in our body, in our family, in our community, across the globe. You are either contributing and experiencing coherence or contributing and experiencing chaos. And it is true that even when there is chaos out in the world, you can still be experiencing peace, love, and joy, coherence. In your own person. Now, this is really, really, really big, which is why it got positioned as first nugget. This is like the flute line. This is the, the first chair. First chair nugget. And and the reason this got first chair nugget, can you believe I'm saying this kind of nonsense? The reason this this is coming out first is because we are as a collective experiencing cycles of change right now climate change um, conflict there's cycles of conflict which they went into the understanding of how on a global scale we experience these cycles and we experience these cycles of conflict of economy and of climate and they're very predictable. They're very predictable in when they will potentially occur. It's not very predictable of how the collective will respond to them. But that's where we have choice of how to respond. But because we are in this time where all of these cycles are peaking, and let me let me explain just a tiny bit about how that works so you will understand that there is a little bit of science behind it and if you want more science behind it check out greg braden because he can actually explain the science behind it and i'm going to give you like just a little snippet but the magnetic field of the earth connects all life not just me and you but all all life everything with consciousness on this planet which is everything um, and the satellites measure fields of this consciousness. And they send back data all the time. And so they are tracking this. There is scientific evidence behind this. Now, the magnetic fields of the sun impact the magnetic fields of the earth. And so as the earth's magnetic fields get weaker, we become less willing to cooperate and that that stirs up the cycles of conflict and so they can see where there's going to be periods of lower magnetic pull and that's when we are at increased risk for conflict and this kind of coincides with major wars and things that happen now what it also gives us is major opportunity for peace 
like it creates the vulnerability and it creates the susceptibility for conflict, but it also creates opportunities for peace and cooperation and change. Um, even after after 9-11, within 15 minutes of the first plane strike, there was a notable um, measuring influx on the satellite report because the hu- the human heart was so engaged all around the world that it affected the entire magnetic field of the earth. So I, I'm just telling you that to know that I don't know. There's really smart people who are studying this stuff all the time. But Spirit says I'm a dot to dot girl. So that's as much as I'm going to give you. I can't give you more than that. But what we have to understand is when you have a choice of how to respond to anything, how to think about things, how to perceive things, you have a choice of coherence and chaos. How am I going to see this situation? How am I going to respond to a situation? Now, this is why it's so important is because this coming year, we have an election here that is already promising to be contentious. Like we're months out and it's already contentious. It was contentious before we even got to an election year. But 40 other countries in the whole wide world are having elections this year too. Now, regardless of what what side you're on, my guess is you already know probably who you would vote for. So my question would be why you would watch the news and allow fear mongering of the news cycle into your system. That doesn't make any sense to me. However, this is what I'm going to tell you because this is the really important part. If you see the other side as wrong, if you see how stupid they are, that you can't believe it, and you respond in a way that questions their motives, that gets you stirred up, that gets you angry or frustrated, or or you just you just can't possibly understand how people would vote that way. And it could be on either side because because one side really can't understand the other side and and it is it doesn't matter which side you're on you are contributing to the chaos so even if you think by watching and being alert to how crazy something is you are contributing you are pouring gas on the fire which reminds me of a little situation that happened last week in my house mark was traveling And my son, on the way home, had said, can I go to gym when we get home from school? And I was like, yep, that's fine. And then he goes upstairs and showers and comes downstairs and he's not going to gym. And I was like, what's going on? He's like, I have to do this assignment. And then he goes on a 10-minute rant about how he hates school, how we're wasting our money because he goes to private school, how, um, you know, is the dumbest thing ever. He's not going to college. This class is useless. Da, 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 on and on and on. And I have tried before, and my husband has tried a lot to yell at him or, you know, tell him how much his education cost and that he's so lucky to be able to go to that school and da 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 da. da. And in that moment, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to let his fire burn for just a second. And I let him just do his thing, say whatever he wanted, and I didn't respond in any way. In any way. Not negatively, not positively. I just let him do his thing. And then I went to read in my room, and um, he came in there. And he had this article printed out. And I'll tell you, his strength is not like reading comprehension or anything like that. That is not his strength. His strength is math for sure. But he brings me this long article. And he was like, Mom, can you read this article with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. It was the worst article he could have ever found to write a current event article about. But that's okay. We read it together. And then he went off and he did his little write-up about this article. 
And then he came back and he laid down and he's like, Mom, I was just mad. I do plan on going to college. These are the two colleges I'm thinking about. And so from that situation, what I found was I didn't add, I didn't contribute to the chaos. I just let the chaos be and it burned out so much faster than if I would have added to it. I could have taken my gasoline and just lit that flame up by telling him how important school is and, you know, he needs it to get a good job or, you know, like that whole conversation. But I said nothing. And the amount of time it took him to just burn through and then come back to a first of all, doing the assignment, and second of all, acknowledging that that's not really, he wasn't really mad about that. He was really mad that he had procrastinated on the assignment, and now it was something he had to get done, and he couldn't go to gym, which is what he really likes to do. So what I'm telling you in all of that is, if you really want to help a situation, don't complain about it. Don't pour fuel onto that fire because what we are doing in every aspect of our society is contributing to the chaos. That goes for, for all areas. I mean, the war on drugs, fighting cancer, um, everything we do is creating chaos energy. We are even if your intention is good, even if your motive is from the heart, if you are responding in a way that is of war, of fighting, of amplifying, of rioting, of bringing this angry energy to something, you are hurting the cause that you proclaim to help. And so if you are really frustrated with the other side, Turning it off is a better solution than working yourself up into a knot about it. I promise you, like, it's science. They showed me, and I wish I could show you, but I'll have to draw you a dot to dot to be like, hey, this is what chaos looks like, and this is what coherence looks like. And so if you have incoherence in your body, that's when you have disease. When, when the cells are not working together harmoniously as they are supposed to, that's how we create disease. Now, if you find any information from those who have healed themselves or those who have died and been to the other side and come back, um, like Anita Morjani, who was at the conference, or Joe Dispenza, who talks about meditation to heal yourself. It is all about bringing healing and love within the body. It is not about, you know, visualizing yourself with a sword and, and you know, fighting against the cells in your body. It is about visualizing healing in your body. It is about bringing love and coherence in your body. And the same can be said to your family. If you have discord in your family, responding with negativity, responding with frustration is amplifying your problem. And it is really hard not to do that. I hear you. I got three kids and a husband. Like, I understand. But what we have to be practiced in doing is taking those three breaths and saying, how am I going to respond to this in love? And you can say love, coherence is the same thing. You have coherence and chaos. You have love and you have fear. That's it. So that is from conference will tell you coherence and chaos. A Course in Miracles will tell you love and fear. Those are our two choices ever, ever. So take a couple deep breaths and say, how can I see this situation through the lens of love? And then respond in that way. Because when we get frustrated and when we respond in a way that says, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm da 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 da. It is like dumping a gasoline on a fire we're trying to stamp out. You are magnifying the problem. That goes with those who are 
mad at the left and mad at the right and mad at Israel and mad at Palestine and mad at the people who are not saving the ocean or the earth. I mean, everything that we are at war against, we are making worse. And that's really a hard shift. Whereas if we thought about healing ourselves, healing our family, healing our planet, healing our relationships with the other side, of seeing those with separate backgrounds and separate skin colors and separate religions, seeing them through a lens of love, we actually do have the power to heal, to bring healing and to to bring down the level of chaos that we're experiencing in the world. So we did do this um, meditation with Anita Morjani and it was, it was a, like a 30 minute meditation we did in a group, which was really powerful. And my experience was, um, I, met, I met up with Archangel Michael, who is a dear friend of mine. I love him. And basically I said, what do I need to know now? What, what is the message for now? What am I leaving this conference with? And the image he showed me was an ocean with really stormy seas and, and boats, you know, riding the waves and looking, you know, just chaotic, like these boats are in trouble. And there was a lighthouse and it said, be the light, guide them home. And the message that's there is what does a lighthouse do? It just stands there burning as brightly as it can, hoping to show those who are struggling how to come home. A lighthouse doesn't jump in the ocean and chase the ships, right? It just stands there firm in its knowing that I am the light. I'll help guide you home. And so as we experience what could be, you know, a chaotic year, like basically we're, we're poised for that in this nation, specifically with an upcoming election, um, and around the globe, like it, it could be a little chaotic. And what I want you to know is that what you're in charge of is that light within. And that's all you can do. And so instead of seeing yourself holding the tank of gasoline and everywhere you go, you're like, oh, you're wrong. You know, how do you think that way? Why do you think that way? You're so stupid. That state's stupid. That whatever. You're just pouring gas onto the fire that your foot's trying to stamp out. Instead, use those hands and cup them around your little flame within and protect that flame and know that as you're stable, as you hold your light, you are a shining example to those caught in the chaos. Be sturdy, be still, be solid, and protect your light and shut off the damn news. Sorry, that was, I just had to add that in there. If you have one vote and you know how you're gonna vote, you don't need the news. You can get, you know, public radio for 30 minutes a day to get a headline or give yourself five minutes every few days to check a just what the headlines are. You'll know what Taylor Swift's doing. You'll know, you know, what court cases Trump is involved in. You'll know who has been indicted for what. And you don't even have to click on the story to read more. If you just feel like you need to be that much in the know, then do it. But this is a time, this is a year where your hand should be used to protect your flame. Because it is so important. If you're listening to this podcast, your flame is so important to help guide others. There are others who are in ships that are rocky. Don't jump in the ocean. Don't go chase them. Show them how sturdy you are on the shore. Be the light and guide them home. All right. 
that's your nugget for this week. You have coherence and you have chaos. In your body, find healing. Stop fighting things. Stop fighting against diseases. Pray for healing. See, see coherence in your body. See how your body is working perfectly. How you are harmonious. When you are looking in the mirror and you are finding all the things wrong about yourself, you are, you are amplifying all the things wrong about yourself. You're saying, I want more of this. This is where I am putting my energy is into things I hate. Let's have more of that, shall we? Instead, challenge yourself to, before you can think of anything else, when you're standing in front of a mirror, tell yourself three things you like about you. And do it until it's easy and effortless and, and comfortable. Like, holy shit, Susan, you're fantastic. Like, be comfortable saying nice things to yourself because that's the energy. That is the energy you want more of. That's coherence. That is love. So when you're pouring your energy somewhere, make sure it is on something you want more of. Otherwise, you're creating what you're trying to avoid. You're amplifying a problem. So be the love. Be the peace. Protect your flame. And that's it. I don't have any more metaphors. But see yourself and your body. See your family and your community. See the things that you love about them. And if you see things that need to be fixed, start visualizing the healing of those things. If you are in constant discord with your spouse, start visualizing nice conversations around the table. I have on my gratitude board, I have kind of a blurred out picture of a family at a dinner table and it has um, the man and woman holding a hand because it was really important to me. We were having some rough times at the dinner table. Um, you know, I, it's very important to teach your children how to eat nicely at a dinner table because I know children who don't and it's disgusting. However, it is not nice to sit around a dinner table that feels like a military boot camp. So it was really important to me to cultivate that. Now, I didn't do it with shouting at him that we needed to do something different. I did it by visualizing really great conversations around my dinner table. And now it's one of my favorite places to be. Everybody gets along really nicely. But that's how you have to focus on the ideal side of what you're looking for. You're going to focus on the healed version of what you're seeking and not amplify the chaos. So next week, I think we're going to talk about the power of eight and how we can use these intentions, this healing intention to group together in small groups and really, really make an impact. We did this exercise at the convention with Lynn McTaggart and it was powerful. But anyway, start, start small, start in your body, start in your home, start being conscious of where you are pouring gas on the fire and then stop, just stop doing it. All right. I love you family. Have a great week. Did you enjoy this little nugget? If so, and you're listening on Apple Podcasts, can you please take a moment to leave me a rating and or review? You'll click the, the dots at the top right and click go to show and then scroll down below the episode's listings to click the five stars and write a review. I appreciate you taking the time to do it. That is how other people are able to find the show when they are looking for similar content. Thanks so much and have a great week.